Hi, everyone. My name is Maria Carmo. Today, I have one more guest to present her proposal on Catalyst. How are you doing, Diana? I'm doing great. How are you, Maria? I'm doing great. Almost in summer. You know, I love summer. We got some more sunny days like flowers. So we keep going. Yeah, yeah. It's just starting to get warm here again, which I'm grateful for because I'm I can I can leave the cold weather behind. I'm a warm weather gal. I think it affects our, our mood a little bit. I think we are happier when we are in the sunny days by the sea anyway. Yeah, and especially because we spend so much time in front of our computers, especially in this community, it's like we need to be getting outside. We need to get that vitamin D in order to make sure that our mind is right so that we can perform well uh, every day going forward. So I agree. Getting warm and it's fine. But tell me, uh, tell me a little bit more about you, what you are doing in the community, how you're contributing. Yeah, so my name is Dana, like you said before, and I actually I'm from the East Coast of the United States, Midwest. I'm from Michigan originally, and I moved out. I live in Vegas now, but I, I moved out to Vegas in 2005, and I pretty much my background is in business. So um, I worked for consumer packaged goods companies in the beverage industry um, for years, brands like Bacardi USA and Evian Water. Um, and it wasn't until about 2017 is when I kind of had like a, a life changing moment and left corporate America. I went to Peru, lived there for a year, working with a nonprofit out there and just kind of got a whole new perspective on life. And it's like, man, there's so much more that I want to do so much more that I thought I was going to do with my life other than just, you know, grind out every day and the money is good. But at the end of the day, if you're not doing something that fulfills you and that you feel, um, you know, you're making a difference in the world and somehow sometimes that can, for me, at least that was really weighing on me. And so I actually got into crypto, though, in 2014 was when I was first exposed to it, just on a small scale, kind of forgot about it. But it wasn't until I got back from Peru in 2018, where everyone was talking about Bitcoin. And I was like, what do you mean? What about Bitcoin? You know, I, I, I had gotten a little bit on a small level, nothing life changing at that at that time. And so I had to reopen my Coinbase wallet and discovered that, you know, that $50 had turned into a lot more than I had expected to be in there. And so again, just kind of left it alone. And then fast forward to the pandemic and, you know, everybody kind of is in their house quarantining and the job market. And so I had been ever since returning from Peru had just been consulting startups and nonprofits. And then at that time I'm sitting there and I was like, what do I really want to do? I've spent a lot of years making a lot of people, you know, a lot of money. Um, it's time to do the things that have been put into my heart to really execute and get done. And there's no more excuses. And um, so at that time, I had a friend who really encouraged me. He's like, you need to find where your Bitcoin is again. You need to start looking into these markets again. And so I did that. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole of the crypto in 2000. 21, which is, you know, from spring until now. And that's when I started finding out about Cardano. And so I got involved in the community in the fall of last year. And it was at first an accident on Twitter. I, I did not know that there were live spaces where people chatted. And then that's how I found people in the community. And it was just such a welcoming community. And they were talking about things that they were building. It wasn't just about NFT sales or, you know, how much is the price? It was about actual things that were being done to help people around the world, actual solutions to problems. And it really intrigued me. So I got involved um, and it's, it's really interesting because at that time I also met my business partner, Siobhan, and um, we're independent filmmakers, we're making a film. And we ended up putting in our first catalyst proposal in Fund 7. And um, it was a, an amazing experience, like 
for the first time of putting in a proposal, somebody that has no experience, you know, we got almost 50 million votes. We were um, three away from being awarded funding. I, I called that a win, even though we didn't get funded that round. I was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. So that's, that's kind of how I got involved. And then through participating in Catalyst, now I, I help um, lead a women's arm of it. And so Juliana, who you've also had on your team, we she helps to lead the women's after town breakout sessions. And I help her with that. And then I also lead on Thursdays in um, uh, outside of town hall women's group meeting, where it's just a way for us to build community. And um, I'm very active on social media in our communities as well. So that's kind of a a, a long story short of my life, the, the cliff notes of a little bit about me and, and what I do in the community. I love what you are doing, that group, bring people together. I did have a few sections and talk with Juliana. I talked to Alessandra, now I'm talking to you and I feel so uh, warm and happy because a long time ago I didn't have anyone to talk with and now we have this kind of networking and then we talk to each other we can actually learn from each other what I think is the most valuable thing like learning mm -hmm. and the another thing I think is important that you said all the way is the community I love the community I love how everybody's welcoming I'm here because of the kindness of the community I also try to level my game up and learning more skills but like in the end of the day we are all people and we need to know who is behind of all this code that we are telling that's going to change the world mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's amazing so I'm just happy I'm happy to be here with you today thank you for having me you're very welcome. So tell me a little bit. You said you have a proposal before. Is the same proposal we are going to talk today was or was something else? No, it's completely different. So we changed our strategy. We changed um, kind of our, our, our approach because in this funding round, Fund 8, there is a cross-chain collaboration challenge. And actually, our... our um, our strategy of how we are going about our, our film has changed as well. So we kind of changed the strategy from fund seven to fund eight because we decided to launch an NFT project. So, and we decided to do it cross chain. So that's kind of where we saw the opportunity. Okay, let's, let's um, take the opportunity with this challenge to see if we can get support from the community in order to help you know, build communities between blockchains and get visibility for Cardano. Actually, if you want to touch a little bit in that uh, subject, interoperability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, you know, all ships rise with the tide, right? So I think that when I first came to the community, um, the blockchain communities in general, I was going into spaces and it was very segregated, right? Everyone was very loyal to the chain that they were most involved in, which is fine. But at the end of the day, I think that there is going to be a time where the ones that really win are the ones that are going to have interoperability with the other main chains. And I think that we really need to help each other get exposed to other chains in a very palatable way in order to start the conversation. Okay, what are the best practices over here? What is the community like over here? How do we start building relationship so that new technologies can be built across chains so that, so that interoperability can start to thrive and it's not just coming from one side. You're creating teams that have members from both chains or multiple chains on it so that the thing that you're trying to build is actually going to work. And it's not just a person coming from one chain saying, I have an idea to make something interoperable, but I'm not even gonna talk to the other chains. It's kind of like what Charles says about, you know, doing things in other countries. You wanna help Africa, you wanna help this country. Well, somebody's gotta go there. You can't just sit in Silicon Valley. You can't just sit behind your computer in a Western country and say, I'm gonna save the world. And you've never been exposed to the people you're trying to help. 
or the people that you're trying to work with, you know? So that's, that's my, that's my two cents on interoperability. And just, I'm not, you know, the technical genius or there's so many very intelligent people in our community. And I think, you know, it, it takes, um, a, a combination of skill sets to really get these things off the ground. You need the technical people, but you also need the people who know how to build relationships in an organic and a healthy way. So that's kind of what we're trying to do with our film, make it really palatable for people to start the conversation and build relationships. I love the idea you talk about building conversation and relationships because there is uh, many, many soft skills that can be used in the community to bring people together. Mm -hmm. The code is important, but in the end of the day, the codes are more or less copies of each other, but we mm -hmm. can copy, copy community. We can copy mm -hmm. people. So did you bring any presentation to, for us? I did. I do. I do have a, a very short presentation that just kind of breaks down our, our uh, proposal. If you'd like me to share, I can okay. share right now. So as you can see, uh, the title of our proposal is Cardano plus Ethereum life-saving NFTs. And this proposal is inside of the cross-chain collaboration challenge on idea scale. And this car right here is, um, it's a Barracuda muscle car. It's a classic American uh, muscle car in the 1970s era. And so the problem that we're trying to solve is that it's really hard for creatives in this environment as, as we know it to build awareness and relationship cross chain using NFTs. So there, there's a gap there. Um, obviously the wallets, obviously the teams, but, and it's due to lack, lack of cross chain team strategy and resources. Um, right now you're really just starting to see conversations um, starting to grow online for myself just within the last two weeks, really. There's projects that are really trying to foster going cross chain. And it's only going to help visibility for projects and visibility for blockchains. So usually what happens is instead of this, instead of being able to do it easily, what we end up seeing is kind of like a, uh, um, you know, a street fighter scene where there's still a lot of maximalism out there um, where instead of building together, we're trying to kill each other. So this is something that we're, I'm really passionate about and just being able to break down those walls to work together. And then this was another situation that was very interesting to me when I started researching the NFT and visibility as we were looking at how are we going to make the most um, impact on the community in order to raise funds for our project and looking at it understanding that there's a lot of people that don't even know Cardano has NFTs. We've had NFTs for about a year now. And um, in March, it was the anniversary of, I believe Cardano Kids was the first NFT project that was launched on the Cardano blockchain in, in March of last year. And from that time to March of this year, you know, you can see the numbers right there. Um, total CNFT projects, 4,600. Um, and you can see the numbers as well, the volume and the assets sold. And when you look at just in the month of January of this year on Ethereum, you can see that there is over almost 350,000 unique buyers and 272,000 unique sellers. And so there's a huge opportunity to work together that to, so that we can get awareness on Cardano blockchain, excuse me. So our solution to this problem is Barracuda Movie NFTs. So our film, my business partner and I, um, my business partner is the writer and the director of the film, and I'm producing the film. And we've decided to launch a cross-chain NFT project to help raise funds, in addition to building community and having people feel like they're on the journey with us of making a film so that by the time the film comes out, so that it's like we're making a movie that matters the movie is about a young Native American Marine who's suffering with PTSD. 
and he goes on a cross country road trip with his cryptocurrency entrepreneur bus friend. And on the road, they do it in a 1974 Plymouth Barracuda. It's kind of a, a unicorn of a muscle car. And it, it, this story, as they go from Detroit to LA across the heart of America, um, you're not only going to see the bonds of brotherhood um, are tested and then they're finding each other, they're finding themselves. And um, our, our war hero is pretty much he is finding a new reason to live. You know, he's struggling with thoughts of suicide. We want to bring light to, to some of awareness of our military members that struggle with um, reintegrating back into society after they have left active duty. And so we're really trying to do something that is bigger than ourselves. That's something for the greater good that we can bring blockchain communities together to start the conversation to help build these relationships that we were talking about earlier. So we're going to have a cross chain team. Um, our artist is from Ethereum where some of our advisors are from Ethereum dev. And then um, we also have a number of very um, well-known Cardano community members on our team as well, helping on the Cardano side. We're going to be deploying a cross chain discord community and this is where events and things um, of that nature, exclusive content will be shared with people who hold our NFTs. We're really going to be fostering a community-like um, environment for people to bond over. So that's something that's really exciting for us that, that we're, we're looking forward to. Um, our NFTs will not only give you access to this exclusive content, but there could be chances to be a extra in the movie, um, do meet and greets with the cast and crew. Um, you're gonna be, there's gonna be uh, airdrops of native art that we have partnered with our native artists. So, you know, holding our NFTs not only gets you um, access to the movie, but there's also merch and art that's going to be um, given to our holders. And then there's going to be golden ticket um, experiences, which are next level experience experiences like the premiere. And um, those who hold both a Cardano and an Ethereum NFT will be eligible to win um, a chance to win the Barracuda car that's featured in the movie. So um, towards the, the end of after we make the movie and when we release it then after we will raffle off the car with the nfts but you have to hold both so we're going to be all of the people from you know ethereum are going to have to have a cardano wallet have to hold a cardano nft if they want to be eligible for that um and likewise the other way around and for our first series this is something that i was telling you ahead of time um we're really excited we just got confirmation that for our first fundraising drop, um, everyone who holds an NFT, whether it's Cardano or Ethereum, will have the chance to win a 1971 Ford Mustang. Um, we're partnered with uh, an auto shop here in Las Vegas called Grease Monkey, and they specialize in classic car restoration. And so they are going to give us this classic car that they've restored um, to help us fund the film and a portion of the proceeds for our first uh, series one drop, which is our fundraising drop, our main fundraising drop, will go towards the nonprofit they support, which is the Waymaker Foundation. And it is um, in association with the Crow Nation, um, the native Crow Nation. Uh, so it just all ties in to our project. And we're really excited about the, the buzz and the community and the activities that we're gonna foster with this project. So again, why we're passionate about um, the movie, a lot of people don't understand that um, it's flying under the radar. The, our, our military members, um, and really mental health has been a buzzword across, you know, ever since the pandemic, but even before, it's, there's a lot of people struggling right now. And to understand that it's not just combat trauma that our, that our military members suffer PTSD from, it's really 
you know, having that struggle of reintegrating back into society, you were kind of broken down and built back up to, to understand that you're a part of a body or part of a team. No man, no soldier gets left behind. And then you're thrown back into society and it's, you're told you're an individual again. And, and it's really hard to reintegrate if you don't have a support system. And right now the number is about 17 of our servicemen and women are taking their lives every day. That's almost 6,000 families affected a year. And those most at risk, and this was really shocking to us, was within the first five years of leaving active duty, um, 18 to 34 year olds are the ones that are taking their lives the most. Normally, when you think of a veteran, a lot of times you think of, you know, uh, Vietnam vets or, um, you know, older generations. And it's really our, our younger generations that are struggling too. And then the other super important thing that we're passionate about with this movie is bringing awareness to underrepresented people groups, not only in entertainment, but in, in our armed forces. When we found out um, that natives join the military in the US five times more than any other ethnic group per capita in their population, it was shocking. Um, I didn't understand why would a group that has had so much taken from them go and fight for the country that has, has done this. And our advisors were partnered with the Native American Veterans Association in LA. And our advisors from there are super committed and behind our story. Um, they schooled us a little bit on the fact that this is, it doesn't matter what a piece of paper says. It doesn't matter, you know, what people think, who owns the land. They're like, no, this is still our land and we fight for the land. And at the end of the day, this is their modern day warrior walk. And so being able to understand that they've kind of been forgotten, um, you know, we've just went through a 20 year war and there's been movies made within, within these past 20 years on Iraq and Afghanistan. And really, you don't really see any minorities in any leads of those roles. Um, and then to understand that the first female that died in Iraq in this war was a Native American. Um, she was the first female, uh, her name is Lori uh, Piuesta, if I'm saying that correctly. And it's just these things are not known. And so we wanna, we wanna bring this awareness up. And then the fact that, you know, friendship, when we're all going through hard times and when we're struggling mentally, you need a support system. So this movie is going to show, you know, especially men, you're going to show it's okay to ask for help. And both of these characters are really, um, they're going through stuff at the beginning. And so they're going to be kind of helping each other along the way. So you're going to see how friendships um, are really friendships, support system, and they're the lifeblood to making sure that people can get through whatever struggles that they're going through. And then major for blockchain, we're passionate about showing on this journey, the real life use cases for blockchain. Right now, people in the mainstream, they just, when they hear of cryptocurrency, they think of crime and speculation. And it's just for trading. It's just for making a quick buck. And so on this journey, we're actually going to showcase, you know, real life use cases. Our cryptocurrency entrepreneur is going to be living out of his wallet the whole trip. And they're going to be coming across people and situations where you're going to actually see them utilizing cryptocurrency in a movie that's not just for smuggling um, some stolen artifact or used for crime in a movie. You're going to actually see it's, it's good uses. So that's what we're really excited about. And then you know a little bit about me, but just to showcase my business partner, Siobhan, um, he has over 15 years experience in the film and TV industry, working for some of these well-known brands like Discovery Plus, Nickelodeon, Bravo. Um, he's been a story producer. He also is, a, um, he's worked in documentaries and has done some short films that have won some awards around the world. So this will be his first full-length feature film, and we're just really excited about it. And then myself, I kind of gave a little bit of an introduction at the beginning. These are some of the companies I've worked for on the state and national levels. 
Um, and so I'm also one thing that I didn't mention. Um, I do, I dabbled in the music industry a number of years ago. I am a registered ASCAP songwriter and publisher. And so I, I've worked with Grammy Award winning producer Christopher Brody Brown. And um, so we're really passionate about utilizing music in our film as well. And we've been talking to people from both, you know, Cardano, Ethereum. There's a lot of music spaces online where you get to hear some, some talent that really is just um, coming out. And so it's really cool to be able to partner on that level too. And then obviously we always honor our executive producer, Roy Tuberis De La Rosa. He's the spiritual advisor for Nava in LA. And um, we're just happy that he's on board. He's been instrumental in helping us not only with um, introductions to key relationships, but also in our journey of learning more about, you know, Native American um, culture so that we can make sure that the, this movie is made respectfully and authentically. And he is also a Marine as well. And um, he did some, his stories are amazing. So we're just so glad that we have somebody who understands from the veteran perspective and then also um, from the native perspective. But because he is a, um, an expert in like healing mo mo modalities, like it's just, he's just been able to share with us some things that are gonna be in the movie that are, that are really gonna help some people. And then off to the NFTs. So this is our roadmap for, actually, I think this might have skipped one. Oh, here we go. So this is um, some of the roadmap that is in the presentation in the proposal itself on idea scale. And you can look more into this if you go onto um, our proposal there, uh, just kind of breaking down micro what we're gonna be doing each month um, and we've adjusted as, as time has gone on, but just to give you an overview of our NFT roadmap, so with the film. So series one and series two are just going to be one part of how we're going to be continuing to engage with our community up until the film is finished in 2023. So there's really, um, it's not just gonna be a one-stop shop with us. We're gonna be engaging the whole way through. We're gonna be building this community. Um, we're going to be having people from multiple chains interacting on a timeline that is more than just you know, a month to launch. We're gonna be conducting activities for a year. And so we're really excited about what this means for mass adoption and for interoperability and for, um, getting people to just talk to each other. So this is something that you can also find on the proposal as well in, in an attachment. And then when, when we take a look at our advisory team, we are just so honored and grateful that some of the minds that came together to help us in the beginning and then also throughout the process, they have been available, answering questions, giving um, you know recommendations, suggestions, uh, introductions to different people that we need in order to help us get to the next level in doing a successful drop. Cash from Benjamin's group um, has been one of, you know, our, our very core people that has really helped me understand um, in answering all my questions and just been there, you know, always available in the DM. So I'm just really grateful for him, Scott Maples. He is the founder of a number of different companies, been involved in the crypto space since 2010. And then we have Scott Maples. He has been just amazing as well. He's the one who helped introduce the idea of the golden ticket um, that we're going to be implementing into our project. And he is has a number of different companies, um, and they are not only um, throwing the first luxury uh, NFT awards gala, in, in California in August at the Biltmore Hotel. But they're also, he's also um, the CEO of Jelly's NFTs, which is a project that is endorsed by David Klein, the founder of Jelly Belly Jelly Beans. 
And um, he just, he's been in the space since 2010 and he just has a wealth of knowledge and on the business back end of things, he's just like top notch. And then Human Z was somebody that we, I, I ran into in, in, in a space, one of his spaces, he does a lot of crypto education and he has been making NFT since 2018. And he has launched almost on every, you know, major NFT chain. So his knowledge and experience has been really invaluable to us as well. And that's it. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Here's a link to our proposal on idea scale. And then you can follow us on Twitter at Barracuda underscore movie or, and then myself um, at Dana Vision. So thank you again for taking the time and we look forward to making a movie together. Thank you for your votes. So Diana, thank you very much for coming here and showing your proposal. I got a few questions if you don't mind. For Go example, ahead. what is the budget that you are asking for? Yeah, so right now our proposal, we're asking for 80,000. Um, this is something that is going to help fund the NFT deployment. Uh, obviously we're deploying two collections at once across two different chains, which with our um, research, we have not found anyone else who has done that for a film before. So this is kind of, and in order to do it right, it takes, you know, developers, community um, people, the marketing, and then also the artists. So the big chunks of money, and all of this is broken down in our proposal, but we're spending around um, 30,000 <clears> is going to not only our series one artists, but also our, our native, we've commissioned um, an, some native artists to do some work for us, which will be airdrops. So we're going to be airdropping fine art that is going to be portraying some of our, our native artists, but also um, stories of native war heroes. And so those things are really important to us to be able to make sure that we're telling um, a story. Uh, there's a story being told um, from a native perspective and with the help of our native advisors from uh, um, not only Nava, but we're partnered with the Saginaw Chippewa tribe in Michigan. They've agreed to be our tribe of origin for our main character. And so um, we wanted to make sure that we're bringing awareness to some of um, the artists out there who are just amazing. And then, um, then we're spending around like eight, nine K for series two with our photographer and um, our storyboard artists. And then we're also um, doing, we're exploring like VR and AR um, integration into our series two NFTs. Um, so being able to fund, you know, the artists who are doing that work as well. There's about thirty thousand dollars going towards, you know, the develop the developer fees, whether it's back end, front end, website design, um, all the motion graphics, um, <clears throat> and then our Discord deployment. And then there's about twenty grand that's going to be deployed between community uh, management, utility, um, being able to make sure that we're putting together a nice package for our holders so that it's it, they they feel it's worth it, you know? Not only do they wanna be a part of this cause, they wanna do something, they wanna come alongside of us to make this film for the greater good, but then they're also getting um, something on the back end too. So that's kind of, I just took big chunks of the 80,000 and broke it down, but also to remember that <clears throat> we're deploying two collections at once across two chains and they're going to be different um, um, collections. It's not going to be the same collection. They're going to be different under the same theme. One is going to be a perspective from the outside of the car. One is going to be a perspective from the inside of the car looking out. Um, and then also just to a little bit more expand, we are funding the NFT deployment with the Catalyst money the money that's being made from the NFTs is going to fund the film, pre-production, production. So like, <clears throat> and then there's percentages obviously that we have going towards a nonprofit and things like that. But the money that is gonna be made from the NFTs is going to be made to, make, to making the film. Um, and with that, 
we're going to be able to use this if we do get funded as a marketing opportunity, not only for Catalyst, but we are planning on, on featuring some Cardano um, within the film. Um, we really want to film a scene at CNFT Con in, I believe it's October. Uh, and we can also, we're going to be putting out a press release um, a few weeks before our drop, which we're still working on the launch date because we want to make sure that everything is set and right and working correctly before we do that. But um, we're putting out a press release and we have been talking to some people, um, uh, the woman who runs the Veterans Network at NBC Universal and the gentleman who created the indigenous group at DreamWorks. They wanna help us with media exposure for our NFT pr project. So we're putting together a press release. They're gonna take it to their channels and we're gonna be able to possibly get some larger media exposure on this. And in that press release, we'll be able to say that we were awarded funds from this funding mechanism on Cardano called Catalyst to help us deploy our NFT project. So it's just gonna bring more awareness to what Cardano is and to how that they're helping make their uh, ecosystem more robust. And it'll, it'll just highlight people's awareness and make them wanna learn more. Hey, I have a great idea. I wanna build something and there's funds out there to do it. Let me, let me look into what this Project Catalyst thing is all about. So that's, that's what we're doing with, like the, with the folks. I completely see your point of doing it because as we go along, as the code evolve, as we can do more with the code, we need to spread out the word about what Cardano is about and exactly what is Cardano and how to deal with it. Some people mm -hmm. don't even know how to deal with walls and stuff like that. So I think the awareness of the, the normal people in the streets is also very important. I hope the community vote for you is all about the community and how, how they think, how it would contribute. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, Maria. It's been a joy. And I just want to honor you. Thank you for all you do for the community. I mean, you're bringing awareness at a very um, palatable level for people who know nothing about crypto. And so I just want to thank you for all of your energy and your time in this community. And it's been a pleasure. You yes. know, I do a little bit here and there and you do your beats and together we are better community. So thank you very much for being here. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.